welcome to African News Update, reaching from the nation's commercial capital, Lagos, Nigeria. And I'm Deborah Eze. Many thanks for joining me. Looking into the African scene today in Nigeria, UN Chief Antonio Guterres on Wednesday called for more resources to help Nigeria meet the humanitarian needs of people affected by conflict. Guterres was concluding his two-day mission to Nigeria. He made a remark after a meeting with President Mohamed Buhari in Abuja. On his part, Buhari reiterated his government's commitment to fighting terrorism and called for international assistance to end extremism. There can be no better assurance that the world is with us as we confront extremist terrorist organizations, ONGA, and the enormous problems of millions and millions of displaced people during this important visit, he said. Still in Nigeria, in a bid to ensure that the South produces the next president, leaders in the Southeast and the Southwest are expected to meet separately on Thursday and Friday. The leaders of the Pan Igbo Social Cultural Organization, Ohai Zain Digbo, and the leading members of the All Progressives Congress in the Southwest warned that the high number of Southern presidential aspirants or candidates was a threat to efforts of the region to produce the next president. The meetings in Enugu and Lagos, it was learned, were convened to ensure that the number of aspirants is reduced in order to strengthen the unity in the zones. Out of 15 presidential aspirants that have been screened by the main opposition People's Democratic Party, five are from the north, while 10 are from the south. Those from the north are Governor Aminu Tambua of Sokoto State, Governor Bala Mohamed of Bauchi State, former Governor Bukola Saraki, former Vice President Atikwa Abubakar, and economist Mohamed Hayatuddin. The PDP aspirants from the south are Governor Yesun Wike, Governor Udom Emmanuel, former Governor Peter Obi, former Senate President Pius Aim, ex President of the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria, Sam Owabunwa, Publisher of Viation Magazine, Deli Mamadu, Charles Ugu, Chikwen Dukalu, Tier Ella Oliver, and ex Governor Ayodele Fayoshe. In Ivory Coast, a dengue epidemic of viral disease transmitted by mosquitoes has broken out since March 22nd in Cote d'Ivoire, mainly affecting Abidjan and killing one out of 11 recorded cases. The Ivorian Health Ministry announced Tuesday. There are nine cases from Abidjan and two cases from the town of Adiake, 90 kilometers east of Ivorian economic capital of 5.6 million inhabitants, the ministry said. The mode of transmission of dengue is similar to that of malaria, and the current rainy season facilitated the reproduction of mosquitoes in Cote d'Ivoire, where a dengue epidemic broke out in 2019 with 130 cases and two deaths reported. The government then launched a mosquito eradication and awareness campaign to counter the spread of this rare margin disease worldwide. Still on the African scene, Senegal is considering enacting a law to regulate social media. The revelation was made by President Macky Sall on Tuesday during a meeting with union leaders, local news reported on Wednesday. President Sall termed social media abuse as a cancer of the modern world. In March of 2021, Senegal saw violent protests which were prompted by the arrest of opposition leader Osman Sonko on rape charges. Then the opposition relied heavily on social media to mobilize supporters. Authorities said crowds had been incited to riots in January's local and municipal elections, Senegal ruling party lost key cities to the opposition. Away from the African scene, Beijing returned to work on Thursday after a five-day Labor Day holiday with China's capital in high COVID alerts. As it tries to eradicate an outbreak, it has managed to limit to dozens of new cases a day for about two weeks. Authorities in Beijing are determined to avoid the fate of China's commercial hub of Shanghai, where most of its 25 million people have endured more than a month of increasingly frustrating confinement to their residential compounds. The capital streets were slightly less busy than on a normal working day, as authorities have encouraged people to work from home, and the closure of schools or bus routes and more than 10% of subway stations as part of COVID precaution has complicated commuting. Officials point to millions of COVID deaths outside China, while its officials death toll since the virus emerged in the central city of Wuhan in late 2019 is just over 5,000. Moving on, Taiwan signaled on Thursday that it had abandoned a plan to buy advanced new anti-submarine warfare helicopter from the United States, saying they were too expensive. 
China has been ramping up its own military modernization and pressure against Taiwan as it seeks to force the democratically governed island to accept Beijing's rule. Taiwan claimed by China as its own territory is undertaking a military modernization program to improve its capabilities to fend off a Chinese attack, including with precious weapons like missiles. Still on the foreign scene, Prime Minister Boris Johnson meets Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida on Thursday to bluster defense and trade cooperation, part of Britain's post brexit policy to deepen ties with nations in the Indo-Pacific region. We talks expected to focus on measures to put pressure on Russian President Vladimir Putin over his country's invasion of Ukraine. The two leaders will also agree in principle a defense agreement allowing British and Japanese forces to work together. The visit will also look to strengthen the trade ties, building on a deal struck in 2020 the marked Britain's first post-Brexit free trade agreement. Former business minister Greg Clark will be named as trade envoy to Japan, while Britain seeking new exports markets as part of a tilt away from its European neighbors now has its sights set on joining a trans-Pacific trade pact of which Japan is a member and also responsible for overseeing the British application. We now head to the sports scene after becoming the first coach to win all five of Europe's top five league, Carlo Ancelotti has put his name in the history books again by reaching his fifth Champions League final. Rio's 4 to new win over Espanyol on Saturday put him alone in Mandera history in the leading team from Serie A, the Premier League, League One, the Bundesliga and La Liga to league titles. The sister Yehud is already the first man to lead four different clubs to the Champions League semi-final and after a stunning extra time comeback win over City at Bernabeu on Wednesday now stands alone as the only man in history to manage in five Champions League finals. Another two year on and he got his revenge as Milan beats the Reds 2-1 in Athens. Finally, Real Madrid performed an incredible comeback against Manchester City inside the Santiago last night to reach the final of the UEFA Champions League against Liverpool. Last night, Manchester City were two goals ahead on 5-3 aggregates going into the 90th minute after Real strike had added to their 4-3 first leg win last week. Benzema beat Ruben Diaz to lose a ball in the box and was brought down by the City defender. He stepped up to take the penalty himself and scored his 43rd goal of the season. There is no doubt it was the most important goal of the night. And that concludes the news of Days in African Television. To keep up with the news and other programs, do follow all our social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Jointum, and on Pangram in their respective order. Visit our website on www.africunia.tv and also subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date. Once again, I'm Deborah Eze. Bye for now.